Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Y'all come on in the room, come on in the room. Come on in, come on in. Man, 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 it's been a while. Good morning. Good morning. Y'all come in and speak to your boy. <clears throat> Come on in. Come in this morning. Y'all come say hello. This is going to be absolutely amazing this morning. I'm super duper excited. Um, Y'all come in. Hey, Apostle, how are you this morning? Good morning. Y'all come in. Y'all share, share, share for me. Share for me. Um, oh, we get we get a few people to come in. I'm super excited. Um, I think I'm more so. I'm more so feel on fire this morning about what the Lord gave me. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Um, I'm um super. I'm think I'm more feel more on fire this morning. Um, at about. Two o'clock, three o'clock this morning, and sporadically throughout the morning, the Lord began to deal with me. Hey, babe, you literally—you were literally just asleep when I went in there. <laughs> oh Lord, my wife is. She does. She's. It's. It's funny. She can be laying down, then all of a sudden I look up. She dressed, or well, she was literally just asleep, and I was just, just gonna let her rest. Um, but I want, I want y'all share for me, please. Share for me. Um, I, I want. I just want everybody to get this. I want everybody. To, and the Lord told me to to come back to the platform of Facebook to do so because I'm. Um, this is going to be one of the many books that I should have written. We're going to introduce it as a master class um, at first, and then we're going. It's definitely going to turn into a book. Um, but I want to share some stuff with you this morning. Um, I want to share with you this morning. Hey, mommy, I'm going to just give a few minutes for people to come in. Um, when we get up, get up till about seven, then I'll start talking. Um, but this is going to be a book. Um, those are those is where the instructions. Um, but it's going to be a master class as well, prior to the book, or maybe master class in the book would be hand in hand. I don't know, um, but um, I definitely have to share this. Um, um, yeah, I have to share this. I've been up period um, sporadically throughout the morning. I'm not tired at all. I'm very well. I feel very well rested. The Lord was dealing with me. Um, I'll go ahead and start to share I'll go ahead and start to share this morning the Lord spoke to me um I don't I looked at my clock it was probably about 3 30 and the Lord spoke to me and he said no matter where you are in life faith fits it no matter where you are faith fits it we're gonna walk this thing this morning okay I just want you to know the Lord said to me, no matter where you are, faith fits it. I said, okay. Um, as I began to write, I got up this morning. Um, I, um, I popped right up as I was hearing the Lord throughout the night. I popped right up at about right at 630. My wife said, what are you doing up? I said, well, I heard God. I got the right. So I began to write. Um, Y'all share this for me, please. I began to write. And as I began to write, um, the Lord began to really deal with me about about faith, um, in a whole nother a whole nother level. Um, I have not have not shared many of the tests, um, some things that are taking place throughout this year uh, with me and my wife. Um, I mean throughout this week rather with me and my wife, my wife and I to correctly um, say English. Um, um, but God has really just been been exercising our faith, and then thereafter moving by faith with us. Um, They have to move in by faith with us. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of the testimonies, but I will tell you this. Um, God's about to do something really, really big in the spirit realm. It's not one of those things where, um, you know, you feel something. It's, I know God's about to do something. And then you're, uh, you're kind of waiting. 
Um, hold on, I'm trying to tag some people in here. I thought about uh, Apostle Carter, so I tagged him in. Um, it's not one of those things where you, I feel God's about to do something and I don't know what it is. It's not, that's not what, what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about that's taking place in the spirit realm is literally, um, literally going to catapult us um, to a place that we have never seen. Okay. Um, a place that we have never seen. Uh, as a matter of fact, it doesn't even seem like this place exists for us because of all that we've dealt with and all that, all that we've gone, gone through. Um, but this morning the Lord told me, he said, no matter where you are, faith, fix it. There are four different types of faith. Good morning, sissy. What's up, Apostle Jones? Um, there are four different types of faith, okay? The first thing I'm going to talk about is dead faith. Somebody says, hey, hey, Jazz, what's up, bro? Um, some, somebody may say, is there such thing as dead faith? Absolutely. According to James chapter 2, verse 17, it says, even so faith, if it hath not works, it is dead. D-E-A-D. -E Being alone. Sometimes our strategy for waiting on God only is not enough. Okay? This morning, um, I, I want to just, I'm going to take my time a little bit, and I want to talk to you a little bit um, about dead faith first. Uh, dead faith. Um, many of us are, are, are operating to where we are only waiting on God. We have our prayer requests. I think we put before the Lord and we're waiting on God to do it. And when God does not move when and how we want him to, we become frustrated and we keep saying, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God, I believe God. But that alone is dead faith. Hey, Shanika, that alone is dead faith. The Bible goes on to say, that faith without works, damn 17, 2 and 17, faith that has no works is dead. It is at a standstill. I, I, I listen, 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 I, 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 I'm, I'm sorry to mess up your theology this morning about faith, but I didn't wake up 3.30 this morning for God to just, just talk to me, just to give you something, uh, um, just get but something to tickle you this morning. This, what I'm about to release, is, 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 is the catapult uh, you into this place that your faith is going to take you. Um, this is good ground this morning. And I don't, I don't, I, I'm not, I don't bag, brag. Good morning, Gatoya. Hey, I tried to see your friend request on Facebook. New page. I can't find you. Just find me. Send me a request with friends and don't worry about it. Um, so, so when you don't work faith, what is work? Okay. I want to, um, I'm going to skip down. Then I'm going to go back. What are the works of faith? Um, the Lord gave me this three simple things, but they're very in-depth. What are some examples of the works of faith? Okay. The works of faith, number one, is the simplicity of obedience, obedience to God's word. We make something hard so easy. What's up, Jabari? We make something so hard so easy. There is simplicity and obeying. There, they are, there's a blessing and the simpl simplicity of obeying God. One of my... Uh, one of my um, friends, mentors, and favorite preachers always says, uh, when he preaches, we make, um, Elder Derek Island, we make, some, we make the simple things so hard. The simplicity is this. Watch this. God gives you a command. You obey the command. You reap the result. If you delight yourself in me, I'll give you the heart, my heart's desire. Okay, let's go, let's go even more simpler. Ask, and it shall be given. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened. Those are the simplicity. Simple or simplicity principles of obedience to God. Okay, that's one of the sim that that's that's an example of one of the works that it takes to operate with without dead faith, outside of dead faith. Okay, um, and then the second thing is the law of reciprocity, which is whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Sowing and reaping, the law of reciprocity is what you put in the ground, it comes back. The third one I'm gonna mention, but I'm gonna come back to it because I want to go back into the want to go in depth. The third one is tilting the ground of your seed. Keep checking on your seed. Shut out my soul. Glory to God. You gotta keep checking on your seed. Clarine, how are you? You gotta keep checking on your seed. Okay, let's go back. The second type of faith. The second type of faith. 
that God showed me was demonic faith. I said, God, demonic faith? Wait a minute. But it took me to the book of James, same chapter. James chapter 17 was about dead faith. The second step level of faith is demonic faith. Okay? According to James chapter 2, verse 19, it says, Thou believest in one God, thou does well. When you believe in one God, that's a good thing. Watch this. The devils also believe and they tremble. My Lord. The devils also believe and they tremble. Okay? Watch this. So then the Lord said this. Shanika, this blessed me so good. Just believing is not something unusual. It's not unusual to just believe in God. It's not something unusual to just believe that God's going to do it. Just believing is us. Is, it goes back to dead, to dead faith. You're just believing. That's not unusual. I believe God. Demons, the Bible just told us that even the demons believe and they tremble. Watch this. Then the Lord said, then the Lord told me that the work while believing is what moves God. The work while moving, the work you do while moving is what moves God. So we talk about faith. So I have to stop myself and ask myself the rhetorical question. What is faith to me? What is faith to me? What has my history with faith shown me? How does faith look to me? What does faith concerning me look like to others? What am I only saying and not working on? Glory to God. What? Hey, Sharon, how are you? Hey, Janelle. What am I only speaking only and not working on? Because here's the thing, if I have a vision, if I, if I, if I speak that thing to come, that be not as though they were, but if I'm only speaking and I'm not working, guess what? That is, that is an example of dead faith. Demons believe. The Bible just said that in chapter 2 of the same chapter, verse 19. Demons believe, the Bible says, and they tremble. So you're what? guess what? Your emotions... That, that, that come from your physical body as it relates to faith, that means nothing to God. Oh, I believe God. We buck, we shout. Oh, I thank the Lord. Listen, what are you doing to get your faith to operate and to receive action? I'm, I'm, my mo I, know, I know I get on my mother's nerves about it, and I'm, I'm going to continue to do it. She's watching. I love you, mommy. Uh, uh, and I'm going to continue to do it. I tell, I tell her all the time. That how this money that's going to be in her hands and how, how her business is going to be blessed and how I believe how um, she, my mama can cook. How, uh, how um, hey Marcelina, how um, how um, God's going to put money in her hand. And I told her that when I get, um, I'm going to put, um, get, get some monies together, I'm going to get a, biz a business cards made. Um, but she got to let me know when she's ready. I say that because guess what? I know I can be making money. It's not enough. I know I'm an entrepreneur. It's not enough. I know that, that I'm going I'm to be rich. It's not enough. What are you doing to invest in you? That is. Your faith said, I see myself rich. Your faith says, I see myself operating more. But what are you doing? What are you putting in the ground? What are you, how, how, when is the last time you went and, okay, remember that seed that you, you, you named and you just planted in the ministry because the man or woman of God told you to sow a particular amount? When is the last time you went and checked on the process of what, of where that's, of the evidence of that manifested seed? What are you doing with the investment that's been put in you? Okay. Then, oh my Lord, I think this is probably my favorite one. Then the third one the Lord told me is vain faith. Vain faith. Not everyone who says Jesus, Jesus Everybody, not everyone who says Jesus is the Lord is going to enter, can, enter uh, the kingdom of heaven. G, uh, um, and not everybody is going to, we're all going to see him, but not everybody is going to enter the kingdom of heaven. Watch this. Um, There's going to come a point, the scripture, I believe in the book of Matthew chapter 7, it says, when we're going to be, we're going to say, Lord, I did this and Lord, I did that. This is my favorite one because I'm giving it to go there. Um, uh, Lord, I did this, Lord, I did that. According to Matthew chapter 7, Verses 21 to 23, it says, it says, uh, many will say, will cry, Lord, Lord. And he'll say, depart from me. I'll never knew you. 
So guess what? Generosity. I don't care how many how many feet the children you sow into. Y'all don't like me today. I don't care how, how many how many times you give money to the poor. I don't care how much I don't care how many people you bless or 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 you you want to do good things for. Generosity only generosity only is vain faith. Generosity is not faith. I said, oh my God. The Lord said to me this morning, generosity only is not faith. I'm not impressed by generosity. I'm pleased by your faith. The Lord is saying this morning, I'm trying to get you to activate in a level of faith that you have never seen. In order to do that, you've got to stop speaking only and start working. I was sharing with my wife yesterday, or maybe the day before, um, we, 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 we're getting ready to um, move into the process of purchasing a house. And I had to go back. I said, well, we, um, we I signed up for um, a workshop to get it done. And um, I said, I need to go and make sure that we didn't miss our class. We did, by the way, try. I need to go reschedule. Make sure we didn't, we didn't miss our first class. So, um, but guess what? I'm walking in the faith. I'm walking in the works re co required concerning my faith. Because my, I have a timeline and everything. So Tara, we're going to do this for this amount of time. And then this amount of time, by the end of the year, or by the end of this particular end of the month, we're going to be moving in our house that we're going to be buying. I refuse to sit in this, keep confessing. And, 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 keep, and keep saying, I'm going to have this. And I'm going to have that. I'm going to have this. What are you doing? What are you doing? Guess what? Yes, speaking exercises your faith. But there are different levels of exercising when you go to the gym. You may start off on a treadmill. But at some point, you're going to start lifting some weights. And you can add the weights to your treadmill experience. You don't lose a treadmill. You keep speaking. You keep speaking. But you got it. You got to be. You got to remember. That it just does not stop only at speaking. So we're saying the right things. But what are we doing? What are we doing with what we, ha what we have? Okay. Watch this. Watch this. Good deeds alone will not save you or give you access to heaven. Then the last, the last thing he told me, the fourth example of the fourth example of faith that God gave me is saving faith. According to John 3 16, God opens up to us. God, uh, God opens us up to the acceptance of faith, of faith's door by showing us God's ultimate act of faith. We know the scripture. Uh for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son That whosoever believe in him should not perish But have everlasting life that, that was God's ultimate act of faith So what he did was He gave us access to, to An ultimate place of faith And he showed us He showed us by, 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 by giving his only begotten son As an example Or, or, or as an act of faith and then let me go back to my notes. Opens us up to acceptance of faith door, um, uh, to acceptance of faith door by showing us God's ultimate example, ultimate act of faith. Then the act of the evidence it produced. So not only did God give us give us His only begotten Son, Jesus was a miracle worker. There was evidence that faith works. He he produced acts of of He was a healer. He was a deliverer. He was a uh, uh, he was an ultimate intercessor for us. He was a he was a he's an advocate for us. Not only did it produce, but it's yet producing on our behalf today. So, it is not something that happened. It's something that continues to happen. Jesus said that the works that I've done, you're going to be able to do them in greater. That's what he said to the believer. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. So God's faith. God, who is the faithful, God, who is faith, exercised himself, moved upon himself, put himself in a fleshly body, walked in this earth realm, 
to show an example of himself so that we can receive him and do what he's done. Glory to God. So faith activated itself and it's now working on my behalf if I if I activate it in me. I, I know that was good. That, that was good. That, that was good. Faith activated itself. God is faithful. God is faith. The Bible says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. Everything that happens, it happens by orchestration of God. Yeah, even the stuff, even the bad, even the even even that stuff that we don't understand, even those things we don't we don't know why it happens. He orchestrates it or allows it, and then turns around and sends our faith to another level. He sends our faith to a dimension when we uh, uh, watch this. While we're losing, he's processing us to trust the God that's caused us to lose or allowed us to lose. Because we understand that every loss, watch this, faith grows. The Bible says we go from faith to faith. Faith grows and it teaches us that every loss implements a level of gain that you would, have, you would, you would not have received had you not experienced the loss. Oh my God. Oh my God. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10, it helps us out a little more with a little more detail by telling us we are saved by grace through faith. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's back up to Romans 8. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, you're saved. Okay? If you confess with your mouth, if you speak it, you're saved. According to scripture. Now, according to Ephesians 8 or 2 and 8, it says, we are saved by grace through faith. But the scripture in the Romans said, what we, we, when we confess with our mouth, we're saved. So we're saved by grace. You have to have faith to speak it. Watch this. So that same grace, that same faith it took to speak that God will be Lord of your life. It takes that same faith that implements that same grace. Glory to God. That implements that same grace to operate on your behalf. I need you to understand that grace is not just something that you get just in case you fall. Shatamande. Oh, God, this bless me this morning. Shanika. Grace is not something you get just in case you fall. Grace carries you past the fall. Grace walks with you through the fall. Grace carries you. Grace stands in proxy from when you don't know what to speak. Because right now your faith is being tested. Glory to God. There are moments when your faith is being tested and you don't know what to say. Grace sends as a voice for you that's been, that's been produced through your faith. That's been produced through your faith. Because there was a time you were speaking, speaking, speaking. You were saying, you were believing, you were operating, you were working. But some stuff has taken place and you, your, faith, your faith has been shaken. Your faith has been tested. I, I, I glory to God. The Lord said to me this morning that the appeal ultimately were, were, were for those of you who need to receive another level of faith. But altogether, it was also for those who have begun to have experiences that have tested their faith. Yes, Shia. You've been wondering, has God gonna, is God going to do what he said he's going to do? I came to tell you this morning that God said that not only am I going to move like I said I'm going to move, but I need you to know, whatever, wherever you are, faith can fit it. Whatever you're dealing with, I'm trying, I'm trying to calm down. I got, I can't preach this thing. I got to teach this thing. Wherever you are, faith can fit it. Oh, it's about to get heavy. Watch this. The Lord said, it's the same anointing of grace that, re that releases the same faith that releases access as we talked about that is granted to you when you don't have vain, vain faith. Jesus, or God rather, as well as a saving faith, gave us access to the kingdom by telling us that the sacrifice of giving up is not losing 
The sacrifice of giving up is what you're gaining after you give up. Jesus was God's only begotten son, the ultimate example of faith. He gave up. Glory to God. Glory to God. He gave up. But the ultimate example for faith was what he received. Jesus came that we may have right to the truth. If God had not released his faith, we wouldn't even have an opportunity to be saved. If God had, had not operated by faith, we wouldn't have the opportunity to know Jesus. There would be no repentance for your sin if God had not operated by faith. So when I thought, I said, wait a minute, God, that is so heavy. So the question is, what is what are you holding back? Not only what are you not doing, who are you holding back? You don't understand that once you operate, it's, it's not just about preaching and, and, and having a title in ministry. I'm talking about in life. You don't understand if in fact you don't rock, you don't walk in faith. You don't operate in the full potential of your faith. You may be, you may be responsible for holding someone back. How could be operating in faith? Or not operating in faith? Hold somebody back. Because somebody don't know how to faith it. Somebody don't know how to faith it. So they need you to show them how to operate in faith. Oh, wait a minute. Then the Lord said something to me. He said, faith and praise are connected and they operate hand in hand. We all, we, we, it, is, it is often for us to say in our churches, praise God in advance. What the Lord said to me is this. Your praise, your praise is a receiving. Watch this. When you praise God for what you need God to do in the earth, you're receiving what has already happened, ED, manifested in the spirit realm. God's time is not our time. His way is not our ways. It's already came to pass in the spirit realm. In the spirit realm, God has seen the timeline of your life several years or several seasons down the line. You're just receiving in your natural self and, 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 and receiving in your natural, your natural, what God has already done in the spirit. It's already done. Ah, glory to God. So the purpose of exercising your faith is to get you to receive what's already happened, E.D., in the spirit realm. My Lord, watch this. So he says, we offer, when we offer praise to God for something in advance, we're believing for what's already existed. You're already healed. You're already delivered. You're already free. You're already rich. You're already an entrepreneur. I know that church is you, but it needs to change your way of faith. Listen, I was saying, I was preaching Sunday at my brother, Pastor Brian Carter Church. And I remember preaching and I said, so many of us are going in, we're experiencing a high off of, off of the cliches and the catchphrases of ministry. Oh, what it takes them. But what are you doing after your experience in the sanctuary? What are you doing after your experience, that moment in the church? What are you speaking, not only speaking rather, but what are you doing with what you got? Already exists in the spirit realm to manifest in the natural realm and be, watch this. The Lord says it needs to manifest in the natural realm for you so that it can be touchable, be tangible. You can feel it. In the spirit realm, it already exists. So God's bringing his spirit timeline, glory to God. He's bringing, his, he's bringing his manifested timeline into your earth realm so that it can take place where you can, so that you can touch it. My Lord, whatever, I, I'm going to say this again, whatever you are dealing with, faith fixes. it. Faith fits it. Faith, according to Hebrews 11 and 1, we, we, we quote this all the time, but I saw that different this morning. Tara, I saw that different this morning. According to Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, Now faith is the substance thing hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. What I heard in the Spirit was faith is a shapeshifter. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Faith is...
is a shape shifter. Whatever you are, faith will, will, will listen. It reforms itself to fit in place and goes into the faith and the faith place it needs to be in. And it to forfeit the, the calamity or the chaos of your situation. Faith shape shift. It changes forms to fit what you need. That's why. That's why a powerful statement like faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of what you don't see can be made because faith ships forms. It, 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 it changes forms according to what you need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Faith, listen, when you believe in God for money, faith ships the form and becomes currency. When you're needing God for healing, shape, faith shifts form and becomes medication. When you're needing God for deliverance, faith shifts form and becomes a strong tower. When, you, when you're going through a process and you feel like you're not going to make it, faith shifts form and becomes a very present help. Faith shifts forms and reforms itself to fit in place and go where it needs. It it, it, it it change from a solid to a liquid it needs to. It, it, it'll look like it disappears for a while and show up in a form of grace uh, and then reappear again in another season in mercy. It shifts forms. Your faith is activating the favor of God. You tell I'm so. Woo! Hey, hey, glory to God. Faith Faith operation, faith goes into the necessary form that it needs to do to be in to bless you. Then the Lord said this to me this morning, and I'm about to let y'all go. Glory to God, hallelujah. Faith is a voice that is not always verbal. It's not always verbal. You've been speaking now for a while. You've been you've been been decreeing out of your mouth and declaring out of your mouth, but faith is not always verbal. My God, faith is not ha! Huh, it's not always verbal. Sometimes you just gotta go back and check your seed. That they about show you. You gotta go back and plant the seed and keep going back. There's those sometimes it looks like harvest. You planted the seed for a harvest, and it looks like that harvest is past, and it looks like you missed some stuff. It looks like you're out of season. It looks like you're out of time. You're coming. <clears throat> Excuse me. You're coming. You're saying, God, where am I? Where are you rather? God, where are you? God, why am I going through this? God, this doesn't look like my identity. God, this doesn't look like me. God, why am I dealing with this? God, I, I sowed this seed. God, I sowed that seed. I said what you said you told me to say. I've gone where you told me to go. I've lost friends because I had faith. I believe you. And God's saying, sometimes your faith is not what you've already said. It's believing me for what I'm about to do. All you have to do is go back and check on the seed that you already planted and they buy your shikanda your shatalaman so the ground is tilting go back and tilt the ground the ground needs tilting it's not a hard place it's a soft place it's ready it's ready for harvest to break through glory to God hallelujah hallelujah watch this the Lord said it is constantly. Faith is, is a voice. It's a voice that is not always verbal. It is constantly calling in what's due to the believer. Faith is constantly calling in what's due to the believer. Watch this. Even while the natural body is resting and you're sleeping, God said, Faith is consistently the voice is calling. Yes, listen. I'm encouraging you this morning to go back. Glory to God. Go back and pick it up. Go back and pick up. Huh? Go back and pick that thing up that you believe God for. Hallelujah. And it had not manifested. 
Go back and pick up the thing you got tired of praying for and it had not manifested. Go back and pick up that that business that idea that that business venture, huh? and it had not manifested. Huh? And you stopped believing God for that. Matter of fact, you gave up on God doing anything for you, huh? and you started praying for everybody else, huh? and you didn't speak for yourself. Huh? Go back and get it. Go back and get it. Go back and pick it up. Your faith is crying out for you. Oh, your faith is crying out for you. Your faith is crying out on the behalf. Watch this. Your faith activates God's glory and it has to work for you. It has to work for your good. The Bible says that all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to purpose. Let me ask you a question. Do you love them? <laughs> I always ask myself the question while waiting on God. Do you love him? Do you have purpose? Are you still here? Now wait on God. Glory to God. Your faith activates God, activates God's glory. Listen. Ask yourself your question. I'm going to phase you real quick. Go back and recall. Ask yourself the question. Where is my level of faith? And where does it need to be? Do you have dead faith? Where you're speaking only, you're not working. Is that demonic faith? Where you're only believing and not moving. Is that vain faith? Where you're believing that your generosity is only all you need to get you where you need to go. Or do you have saving faith that gives you access to everything you need from God? Access to everything you need from God. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Get up and work. Uh, listen, don't 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 you tell yourself, the people around you or me, no more visions. I believe I'm gonna do that. Do it. You don't have to have any, you, listen, you don't have to have the permission from anybody to be blessed. What you say? You don't have to have anybody's permission to be blessed. You just got to get up and work. You don't need permission from, is this my time? What you think? You think this is my season? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you how you know if it's God or not. If a prophecy is given to you and it'll come to pass, it's God. If it don't, it's not. If you believe God for something and you get up and you work today and it don't work, that don't mean you stop because you're, that don't mean you stop and you fail, you're a failure. That means it's not the season of working. Working next season. Or well, sometimes you may be in the right season, just the wrong strategy. Oh, I know I'm talking this morning. You may have to change your strategy up. You have to change the way you do it. Right season, wrong way. Disconnect, disconnect for some people. Sometimes you got the right strategy in the right season. You're just connected to the wrong folk. Stop talking too much. Stop telling folk what your plan is. Everybody that walk with you ain't praying for you. Everybody that's standing by you ain't believing God for you. Everybody that say, oh, that's going to be nice. I can't wait to see it. Don't really want to see you make it. So your responsibility, your responsibility after this morning inspiration is to get up and check what's around you. Check what's in you. Check your surroundings and change it if it's, if it's necessary. Check and, 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 and check around you if it's necessary. Then check where you are as far as your level of faith. Where are you concerning your level of faith? And what does it need to be? All I need is mustard seed faith. But I don't say if I have faith the size of a mustard seed. Yes, that's true. But it also says with faith you can move mountains. They don't mean just send with your arms folded to believe God. 
The Bible said the way that they wait upon the Lord shall need us strength. Yes, it does. But you need to work while you're waiting. I um I had a last night I had a thought. I'm gonna take a small amount of money. Every paycheck or every amount of money that we get. That we get. Now I'm I'm gonna tell you what it was. I said I'm just gonna take I'm gonna take ten dollars a paycheck. At least ten dollars a paycheck. And I'm gonna put it in a separate account. And I believe God. All I gotta do is my work is to start writing. My excuse has been I don't have the money to publish my books. But I, I had an inbox, several inboxes for people about publishing services that are for free. So whatever resources I need outside of, outside of it being published, I'm going to sow into myself. I said just $10. So that whatever resources I need, I will have to sit and say, I don't have it right now. Now I got the wait. Mmm. I got to wait. But because I'm investing myself and investing myself toward toward this this ultimate project, my investing in the money that I'm putting away, when I need something, I can go to that pot. Hold me accountable, Tar. I can go to that pot and pull. Because I'm sowing into myself. Ain't nothing wrong with sowing it to you. Now they don't mean to go buy stuff and get stuff that's that's gonna that, that you can use in this next season. Some of us have wasted so much money. Some of us have 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 uh have have wasted so much money trying to trying to keep up keep up an image, look a certain way. But the Sprite commercial says image is nothing, thirst is everything. What are you thirsty for? What are you hungry for? What is that thing that that you sleep with, you wake up with? That's always on your mind. What are you supposed to be doing? You're settling right now. And what you're doing, you don't like your job. You don't like your career. You don't like anything about your life right now. But you're settling right now. Because it's sustaining me. What are you working with? What's in your hand? Glory to God. Let's pray really quick. Father, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice. I decree and I declare, Father, that that, that this word that you've given your people will not fall to, to, to will fall on good ground today, Father. Will not fall, fall on stony ground. And God, I pray, God, that, that it was just something to hear, but it penetrated their hearts. And that they will hear you on today, Father. And they will move. Thank you for entrepreneurs. Thank you for business owners. Thank you for investors, Father. Thank you for realtors. Thank you, for thank you, Father, for houses that we didn't build. For cars we don't have to buy. Thank you for men sowing into our bosom. Your word said good measure. Press down, shaking together, running over show. Men given to our bosom. Thank you, Father, for money being put in our pocket. Thank you for bills being paid. Thank you, God, for, for debts being paid. Thank you that we're debt-free, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you that we're walking in overflow. We're walking in divine favor. We're walking in harvest. We're walking not good, God, in just a season. But a lifetime, a moment of change we are walking in. And God, we receive you. We bless you, Father. We give you honor. We give you glory. And we give you praise. It's that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you this morning. Listen, really quick. Really quick. Um, I have not been doing drive time. Just so much has been going on. Um, I'm, um, I'm not going to do it every morning anymore. We're working on several projects. Um, I will make sure that I put the flyer up prior to. Um, at least a day or two prior to um, Tuesdays does seem like a good day, but I'm not gonna put a day. Um, just when y'all see me here, y'all pull on me. Um, y'all pull on. Uh, y'all come in and support us. Um, we're working on a, a few projects, a few things. We I need to stop. I'm doing too much at once. Um, try, well, I have a lot going. I'm gonna and I'm gonna touch everything. I can't do everything at once. I'm gonna take my time and do do one thing at a time. Um, um, February, April rather, April 24th this year, um, 2021. Focus on forgiveness. We'll be celebrating one year anniversary. Yay! Our first year anniversary. Also, in that same in that same event, we'll be celebrating uh, my 40th uh, birthday. I'm super excited about that. It's going to take place take place Saturday, April the 24th, 2021. Um, location is going to be Un uh, United Fellowship His Way Holiness, right here in Jonesboro, Arkansas, where Apostle um, Brian Carter is the um, is the host pastor. Um, and the flyers up. Um, I'll post it again. Um, the flyers up. Those of you who have access to flyer, please share, 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 um, share that. Also, my very first master class, officially official master class, is coming up in May. Okay, 
I will start registration. I, I can't remember the exact dates. I, I rem that fire is actually flowing in my story. I posted it up today. M registration, I believe I said starts, I said March the 31st through April 15th, I believe. But I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to do it on top of my dome. My registration will start in um, at the end of this month, I believe. And it goes pre-registration. Listen, it's twenty dollars per person. Twenty dollars for per person. Um, it's gonna be a four week a four weeks course, okay? A four weeks course. I'm super excited about that. Um, pre-registration is only twenty dollars. Um, after after the deadline, I can't I'm, I can't give you the, the exact deadline. After that deadline, registration goes up to thirty dollars, so it'll be ten dollars more. Um, I, I want us to get in. In time, I'm gonna cut off registration at a particular date. I have not released that date yet. I'm gonna cut off registration because I don't want I don't want to have to. I want to be make sure they have enough booklets for everybody. Um, registration will include you. Um, um, sending your email addresses. Um, and so that I can get you the the, the um the literature that you need and the stuff we're creating. Uh, for for um for you guys to be able to have literature y'all when i tell you that that i believe god's going to do some amazing things um we have some big projects coming up um as well we'll talk about those later um there are also some other things we're doing this year look out look out focus on forgiveness my and entire card ministries we are doing an amazing we are we are getting ready to move um um move like never before listen if you want to sow and to focus on forgiveness you want to sow into this word today listen i used to be be scared to do this stuff but i tell you what when um the season come when they need to come people gonna do what they need to do some gonna sow some won't people believe what they want to believe. so here's the thing you got to believe in yourself when other people won't but anyway i said it for y'all to feel some kind of way i said it because this is what i wanted to say um you can you can uh so be a cash app to preach myelin uh my cash app is preach myelin uh, my Venmo, um, uh, Zell, I'm, I'm listening to you, Zell, right now. I'm having some issues with Zell. So my Venmo is capital F, lowercase o, lowercase f, 18 on Venmo, okay? Cash app is Preach Mylan. Preach, like Preach Mylan. My name is spelled M-I-L-A-N. Venmo is um, lowercase, I mean, capital F, lowercase o, lowercase. Okay, well, Ashley Pinted, thank you. She not be, I'm going to go into it, though, so I want to say it because I was on my, I was on a roll. Okay, Venmo is discontinued, okay? So our cash app is Preach Miley. I mean, I'm sorry, Zell is discontinued. Cash app Preach Miley, Venmo, capital F, lowercase o, um, lowercase o, lowercase f, the number 18. And then um, PayPal is ForgivenessGuy20, okay? So you have three ways um, that you can um, donate. You can also donate here via Messenger if you want to. Everything helps, y'all. Everything helps, whatever you want to do. Um, listen, name your seeds. You sow those seeds, name them. This is for... If something was said today that activated you or that moved you, this is for this. This is for that. Name your seed and go back and check on the harvest. Believe God. It's been a while since I got to tell you, do something big for yourself today. If everybody else is mad about it, don't even let that worry you. You make a big deal about it. God bless you. Love y'all. Enjoy the rest of your day.